Today, I am gonna be making my own vegan camembert cheese. <laughs>
back I mentioned that I got a vegan cheese culture starters set so that was going to allow me to make various vegan cheeses among them like a Roquefort blue cheese and also a camembert cheese. I know some of you guys wanted to know a little bit more about the process how it went how I think it went so I have the the cheese right here okay it actually, it looks, it looks pretty good. With the camembert, it was actually pretty easy. Like the startup process was pretty easy. I have a spreadsheet because I was making two cheeses at the same time and I'll talk about the blue cheese later. I think what I was concerned with at the beginning was like one, whether other types of bacteria would come into the cheese and it would get it all gross and moldy in a bad way. But what I found out was because you were putting in that penicillium candidum, that mold kind of takes over all of the other molds that you have around. So the cheese itself was very strong in kind of just this one like camembert. Uh, bacteria. The second thing that I was nervous about was like I don't have a dedicated fridge where I can you know really adjust temperature exactly. What I ended up doing was I had a uh, just like a food thermometer and I placed it in different areas of my refrigerator and I found the area it was actually the top shelf where I could get it between 7 to 12 degrees Celsius so that's actually the the, the warmest bit of the of the refrigerator. So this was where it needed that two weeks to really develop for the bacteria to grow around it. Once I found where the temperature worked, it was actually quite easy. Like every day, um, probably like for the first two days, I didn't I didn't really see um, anything. But then, you know, every two days afterwards, I started seeing kind of white mold developing on the the side. I had a harder time getting the mold to develop on the top and the bottom and I think it's because the paper was pressed right up against the top and the bottom whereas it had room on the sides. So I guess my recommendation is when you wrap the cheese in the ripening wrap, it's sometimes hard to avoid but like keep it loose. And then also what I did was like every two days when I would wipe it dry, I would also flip the cheese so that the bottom wasn't always the bottom. And so it kind of gave it a chance to breathe a little bit. But that was the only thing. And then as you know, another two days went on, another two days went on, it just started to fill up the sides and it looked actually really good. I was really happy with it. Towards the end of the two weeks, you you kind of started seeing that it naturally, it couldn't grow any more mold and things started looking the same uh, pretty much. And I think I took it a little longer than two weeks because I was like, oh, maybe it needs more time to develop the mold on top. And it, it just felt like it kind of went through its cycle and it was like, okay, like two weeks is uh, definitely enough. Um, and then uh, in terms of like smell, I smelled it all along the way because <laughs> I was a little nervous about eating this fermented cheese that I've made in my own house. Um, but I, I, I smelled it and throughout the two weeks, the, the camembert was actually, it was very clean. Like maybe towards the end, like little bit of tang, but like not, not, not really, not really. After the two weeks, what you had to do was once it was covered in mold, you had to wrap it in another type of wrap. Aging paper is just the stuff that you see from like delis. It's basically like one side is kind of just more plasticky and I feel like maybe it no longer enables the the cheese to breathe <laughs> there was no um, temperature control there so so I placed it in for a week and a half I might be a little bit late uh, a week and a half and and now it is ready to eat so I feel like the process for camembert was quite easy like maybe I was quite lucky but I, I made sure to always like wash my hands 
before I handled the cheese and I also didn't touch the cheese too much. When I was moving the cheese, I either had gloves or I was using these to flip them. I was really nervous about bad things happening if I touched the cheese. But if you look at some of the videos that Cashew Bert have, um, towards like the later stages, he was just handling it with his hands, but obviously like wash your hands. It's a lot of time and effort. Um, and plus the, the initial, you have to really like take care of it, um, at least at the beginning. So it's, it was one of those things where I didn't want to screw it up. So uh, yeah, so that that is really it for the process and my feelings on it. I thought it was really easy. It wasn't as scary as I thought, like didn't, weird bacteria didn't grow on it. So um, yeah, that, that, that is it uh, now and go and watch the recipe and uh, we will be doing this cheese taste test very soon. <laughs>